In this video, I'm gonna be reviewing the Saturn IV Ultra 16K. This is a brand new resin printer that has just been released from Elegoo. And as the name would suggest, it does sport a brand new 10 inch 16K resolution screen, which gives it the resolution of 15,120 pixels by 6,230, and that makes each pixel size only 14 by 19 microns. Elegoo has done a great job of listening to the consumers who use their products, and they've made several small but noticeable improvements to this printer, other than just throwing a new screen on it with a slightly higher resolution. And if this printer sounds like something that you might be interested in, check out the links that I've got down in the description. I've got links to the printer, the resin, and everything else that I use in today's video down in the description. And before I continue, I do want to point out that Elegoo did send me this printer for the purpose of making this video. However, this video is 100% my honest opinion on the Saturn IV Ultra 16K. I'd also like to point out that I've been 3D printing for well over 15 years now, and that's been with filament printers. This is my first experience with a resin printer, and yeah, I might sound like a noob, and I did make some noob mistakes, which I will go into later in the video. So let's focus back on the machine. Like I said earlier, this machine has a 10 inch 16K resolution screen. However, the build volume is slightly smaller compared to the 12K version of this machine. The build volume on this one comes in at 211 millimeters by 118 millimeters by 220 millimeters. And I believe the reason for the slightly smaller build volume is because of the next feature that I'm gonna tell you about, which is the heated resin tank. One of the new features that they have added to the 16K is the heated resin tank. And if we look at the bottom of one of the new resin tanks, you can see that there are two new pogo pins on the bottom of the screen. And this is how the 16K connects to the resin tank and heats up the resin before printing. So that means that the 16K will now heat up the resin to an optimal temperature, which is 30 degrees Celsius or 86 degrees Fahrenheit before it will start printing. And this feature can be turned off, but it can't be adjusted. So that means that it's pretty much on or off. The advantages of having a heated resin tank include better fluidity of the resin, and it also promotes better layer adhesion. It also eliminates air bubbles in your resin, and it also prevents layer separation. You may also notice that there is a minimum indicator as well as a maximum indicator on the resin tank. This is something new with the 16K, and I would assume that there must be a minimum amount of resin in the tank in order for the heater to work properly. There is also a sensor in the print bed mechanism on the 16K that can detect if your resin is too low or too high. For instance, when I first filled the resin tank on this printer, I slightly overfilled it. And when I went to go and make my first print, the printer wouldn't continue until I drained off some of that excess resin. Now that's a good feature to have because you don't want too much resin in that tank. And when that print bed's lowered into it, have that resin overflow the sides and get all down inside of the machine. And while we're talking about the print bed, Elegoo did make an improvement to it for the 16K model. It now has these handles on top, which make it easier to hold and grasp, especially if your gloves are soaked with resin. Because the last thing you wanna do is drop a print bed and crack your screen. I'll go more into that here in just a minute. And this isn't something new for the 16K version, but it does come with a rather flimsy but useful drip tray that actually does a good job of keeping the resin from dripping down into the machine when you remove the print bed. One of the more annoying things that I have found while using this printer is the print bed tends to accumulate resin here at the top inside this gap. It is shaped so that the resin will flow off to the sides, but when a print has just been completed, there's still plenty up here. I did try out one of these hooks that can be downloaded and 3D printed, and it's made for the Saturn IV Ultra print beds, and it holds the print bed at an angle so that all of that accumulated resin will just slide off and go right back into the resin tank. However, remember when I said you don't wanna crack your screen? 
Well, I did just that on only the second print that I made on this printer. I placed the print bed on that hook and about five seconds later, it slipped right off, fell into the resin tank, poking a hole into the film and also cracking my screen. I did inform Elegoo that my stupidity destroyed this printer on only after the second print, and they were kind enough to send a replacement screen so that I could continue making this video. And although it's not a complicated task, it is very time consuming to change out the screen. The printer pretty much has to be completely disassembled just to change the screen. And the screen is a wearable part. With enough use, it will eventually need to be replaced. So that's something to keep in mind. The Saturn IV Ultra 16K also has a tilt feature that tilts the resin tank in between layer prints so that it breaks the layers free more easily. This process is much more efficient than just pulling straight up on the print bed to break it free from the release film. It also speeds up the whole process. Elegoo claims that it's possible to print as fast as 150 millimeters in the Z-axis per hour. Another feature that Elegoo claims this printer has is an AI camera. Now, I found that this feature wasn't really all that great because it never did catch any of the failures that I had while using this printer. First, you have to keep in mind that nothing is even visible to the camera or even the naked eye until the print has completed around 30 millimeters on the Z axis. Also, it can only see the back right corner of your prints. So if there's a problem on the front side, then the camera just can't see it. The camera does record time-lapse photos of your prints, which can be pretty cool, especially if you're like me and you make a bunch of videos. It also comes in handy because it allows you to remotely monitor your prints as they happen. And another one of those nice new features only found on the 16K is the addition of a light on the inside of the printer. So that will now allow the camera to actually see even if your printer is located in a dark room someplace. And if we turn our attention to the outside of the printer, one of the things we will notice is there is no longer an external Wi-Fi antenna. Now, don't worry, the 16K is still Wi-Fi enabled. There's just no external Wi-Fi antenna. And also here on the front of the printer, it has a small touch screen. And did I say that it was small? Don't get me wrong, the Saturn IV Ultra 16K has a great user interface. There is plenty of useful information on the screen, such as the status of a print or the status of the printer itself. It even has a built-in self-check that will make sure everything is operating as it should on the printer. And this self-check performs each time the machine is powered on. It can also be manually activated by the touch screen. And don't get me wrong, the screen does have a lot of useful information. It's just that I'm at the age now where I'm wearing bifocals and this screen is just plain hard to read at times. I really like all of the info that shows up while it's printing, such as how many layers are left and the estimated completion time. It's just too small for me to see. I would be willing to pay just a few extra dollars to have a larger screen. This printer does work with the Chitu Box Slicer, but Elegoo has also released their own slicer called Satellite. I will say that I haven't really tried out the Satellite software all that much, mainly because I can't get it to find this printer on the network. And also while filming this video, there isn't a Mac version of this software available, but if you go to the webpage and look, it does say that there is one coming soon. And I didn't have any issues getting Chitu Box to recognize this printer over the network. So for all of the prints that I make in this video, I will be using Chitu Box. And also for this video, I'm going to be using the Elegoo 1.0 standard resin. So Mrs. Making Stuff has got some chess pieces she would like for me to 3D print for her. And I figured that the Saturn IV Ultra 16K would be the best printer for the job. So I took the files that she gave me, sliced them up in Chitu Box, and I have remotely sent them via Wi-Fi to the printer. Let's start the print and see how well it works. So the first thing I'm going to do is go here to the main menu and select print and then local files. And then I'm going to select the king and the queen. And it's asking me if I want to print and I'm going to select 
print. And the first step that's going to occur is you're going to see that the printer is going to lower the print bed down into the resin and it's going to preheat this resin to 30 degrees that's 30 degrees Celsius or 86 degrees Fahrenheit before it will continue and actually start the print process. And the resin has been preheated and the print process has started. And this is what I'm talking about, how this screen has a lot of useful information, but it's just way too small. This right here tells how many layers are left and it also has the estimated remaining time. And like I said, this is just almost too small for me to read. I had a hard time even getting my camera to focus in on this because it is so small. So we can tell by looking at the tilt mechanism of the printer that the printing process has started. You can see that it tilts in between each layer print and it's only taking about three or four seconds in between each layer. And uh, the models that I'm printing are 110 millimeters tall. And if I look over on the screen on the front of the printer, it's telling me there's about six hours left before this print process will complete. And it took just a little over five hours and 15 minutes to complete the print, not quite the six hours that it was telling me when I started, but the print is finished. So now it's time to start the cleanup and curing process. And for the washing and curing process, I will be using the Mercury XS bundle. I will have links to these down in the description of the video. And the washer comes with a 7,000 milliliter tub, and I currently have it filled with some 99% isopropyl alcohol. And the curing station has a large 195 millimeter turntable, which is capable of handling just about anything that the Saturn IV Ultra 16K can print. And when the cleaning and curing process is finished, this is the result. You can see it looks really good. And if we zoom in here, you cannot see any visible layer lines. Now, what you can see is where the support was connected to the model. There's all these little dimples. And I don't know if that's something that I did, but I would say for a model like this, if you don't need support, I definitely wouldn't use it unless you want to go in and clean all of this type stuff off. Now, something else I did notice, let's see if it'll show up on camera. And right here, something happened almost when the model was finished printing. And it's also on the other model. It's harder to see it, but it is here. Something happened right here when those layers were printed. And I don't know, like I said, if that's something I did wrong, uh, something wrong with the resin, maybe the temperature in here changed because I will admit I forgot to turn on the resin heater. Remember I said it can be on or off. And when I printed these, I had it turned off. So I may revisit this and try and print them again and see if it does any better. All right, so my curiosity got the best of me, and uh, Mrs. Making Stuff said that that king and queen that I just printed was actually a little bit too big. So I printed them again, and this time I remembered to turn on the resin heater, and this is the result that I got. And I also did not print these with support. So you can see that this is just phenomenal, the quality I mean, coming from the filament printer world where you can see the layer lines in everything that you print, I mean, this almost looks like it was injection molded. And here is the queen. It looks just as good. And then that defect that was down here at the bottom, that is gone. So I don't know what caused that. But let me show you here if I can get the light. Here we go. 
this flat spot around here, it's just shiny. I mean, that's just remarkable. It's like I said, it's almost like these were injection molded instead of 3D printed. Okay, so this next piece, I'm holding it in my hand so you can get the idea of the size of it. Now I'm gonna zoom in, and this is just crazy, the amount of detail that this printer is capable of doing. Like I said, you'd never be able to print something like this with this kind of detail. Like look at the teeth and the skeletons. You, you could never do this with a filament printer. This is just remarkable. And I think I downloaded this one from Thingiverse. So there's that one. All right, and let's take a look at this one. Again, here's my hand. That will give you an idea of the size. This one, I believe it was parabolic curves or something. I also downloaded this one online, probably from Thingiverse. And you can see just the detail that this gets. And next up is a little baby Groot that I printed out. And this does an excellent job of showing the detail and the resolution that the Saturn IV Ultra 16K is capable of performing. There is a little bit of support material I can see right here in between the fingers that I did not clean off. But other than that, another excellent print. And the next 3D print was done from one of the 3D scans that I performed in the 3D scanner video. And if you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link to it in the corner of the screen and also in the description. But in that video, I scanned a buddy of mine and you can just see the detail on this. And uh, this is the file 3D printed that I scanned in that video. Now I will flip it around here, you can see on the back side, you can see some of the dimples from the support material. And also, this is the print that fell and broke the screen on my printer. So that is what this damage is from here. This is just where it fell and hit the screen. It's not a print defect. But right there, that is just remarkable, remarkable detail. Like I said, coming from filament printing, I would never get anything like this from a filament printer. So now that I've used the Saturn IV Ultra 16K, I kind of get the idea of why they are so popular with people that want to print models and figurines. It's mainly because of the detail and the resolution that you just can't get with filament printers. And the few things that annoy me, like the light that you can't turn on or off once a print starts, or the small screen on the front, I have no doubt that Elegoo will continue to improve on their printers, and hopefully these types of small issues will be fixed in future models. And I'm pretty impressed with the results. It was very easy for me to get started. Like I said at the beginning of the video, this is my first resin printer and I had no issues getting it up and running. Pretty much all of the settings, everything was just straight out of the box. So yes, I would say this is a good printer for anybody who is just getting started with resin printing. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please give me that big thumbs up and let me know down in the comments what you think about the Saturn IV Ultra 16K. And if you aren't a subscriber, please consider hitting that subscribe button and ringing that bell so you don't miss any upcoming Making Stuff videos. And thanks for watching.